everybody. Welcome to Digging Deeper Jazz. It's Jeff Antoniak. So I want to talk to you about a lesson with Joe Lovano, great saxophone player. So um, guess where I was in 1991? No, you're wrong. <laughs> I was sitting in the recital hall at the University of North Texas in Denton, Texas, uh, doing my master's degree, and Joe Lovano came to uh, town and did a presentation. We always had an, an amazing guest artist every Tuesday of the spring semester, the way I remember it. It's a long time ago and I'm old. Um, so this particular week, Joe Lovano, what a big deal. He was the, you know, kind of the biggest star in jazz. He really still is, but at that time his star was really rising. It was a big deal to get Joe Lovano. And it was such a blast to hear him and his sound and his presence. And although it was 30 some years ago, um, there's a lot I remember from that presentation. And uh, well, by a lot, there's two things I remember. I wish it was more. And here's one of the things. Somebody asked him, he had been playing with Bill Evans, the legendary piano player. And somebody asked him the way I remember it about playing with Bill Evans, you know, what was it like? You know, some dopey question like that. He had a great answer. And he said, Bill Evans, I felt like I was behind Bill Evans all the time. He was always ahead of me. What does that mean? Uh, does that mean Joe Lovano was dragging time-wise? No, what it meant is harmonically, Bill Evans was playing ahead of the chord change. So when there was a chord change in measure five, he was already playing that chord change in measure four. He was literally showing up early. And so Joe Lovano, fantastic player at this time, he could play, but um, he noticed that it felt like he was just playing catch-up all the time. And so that was interesting to me. Huh, what does it mean to play ahead of the chord changes? Um, well, it means literally that. If the chord says, you know, if you're on a C minor chord and the next chord is A flat major, start playing A flat major early. Oh my God, how do you do that? Wow, that sounds pretty, you know, so okay, it's rattled around in the back of my head, but I remember going and listening to a bunch of Bill Evans after that lecture. And I remember hearing like, Ooh, I do hear what he's talking about. Bill Evans, who we think of as so, you know, be, such a beautiful player, so impressionistic, so, you know, this lovely touch and sound and everything from the piano. Um, yet there's an aggressiveness to his time and his playing. And that's what Joe Lovano was talking about. So I've been thinking about that now, 30 years later, and this is something I'm working on in my own playing. And I really dig it when I hear other people do it well. So I've got an example of that for you here. Before we jump into that, um, visit this link. Schedule a uh, tour of Jazzwire. Go to this link, fill, put your name by a spot, get a personal tour of Jazzwire. If you watch any of these videos, I've talked and talked and talked about Jazzwire because I'm really proud of it and I honestly, honestly believe there is no better way for someone who's not in music school to get moving ahead playing jazz because we need to do it together. We need to hear each other a lot. And that's how Jazzwire is set up, seven days a week, by the way. So check out the link and uh, sign up and get a real good just sense. Is this, is this right for you? You wanna move ahead, you're watching these videos. Is this a good fit for you? Check it out, see. Okay, so let's do this. I'm gonna play, I'm using part of the song, I Love You, Cole Porter tune. And this is a cool tune because as you'll see on the sheet, the first four measures are kind of hanging out in A major. Not the first four measures of the tune, but where we're gonna start, measure 13. So we're hanging out in A major, and then there's this big jump to a two, five, one in F. So I'm talking about that area of the fourth to the fifth measure. So let me do this. I'm gonna play uh, the first example here, which is, you know, little etude I wrote out, a solo. This would be a fine solo for anybody to play in this spot. You're gonna hear me play four measures in A, I'm gonna stop, and then you're gonna hear me play another good phrase now in the key of F. So this is not what I'm talking about. This is playing with the chords. Most of you would be happy to play with the chords. So here's an example of that. All right. So. Go back, rewind that, listen to that a couple times, and listen to how it's a very nice four measure phrase. Part of a four measure phrase is space. Part of this sentence is the period at the end of it. 
and some space before I continue on, right? So uh, listen to that good phrase with a little space in the fourth measure. Now listen to the second good phrase, little space in the fourth measure. Perfect. That is absolute A plus uh, jazz soloing right there. Everything was great. Cool. Now what Joe Lovano was talking about, what Bill Evans was talking about, is let's show up early to one of those chords. So I'm suggesting there's a big key change in measure five of the example. That's where things totally change. Topic of conversation changes. So what I want you to do is start playing the fifth measure early. Now you could do it by a beat. That would be subtle, but it would be cool. You could do it by two or three beats. Wow, that's starting to be something. In my example, I play a full measure early. So I've reharmonized the song. In the fourth measure, where it's supposed to be A major, I'm playing G minor. Those are wrong notes. There's some really, quote unquote, wrong notes over A major. If you look at example two and analyze what's going on in the fourth measure, um, wow, it's a hot mess is what that is. Now, if you just show me that measure and say, hey, what do you think of my A major lick? I would say, uh, you got some problems and uh, we're gonna need to uh, spend a lot of time together because there's a lot you don't understand. It's not right. Um, but now when I see the context, and I think when you hear this, you're gonna hear that it sounds pretty cool. Let me play it for you uh, twice, and I'll just loop the uh, section twice and see if you can understand sort of the logic and see if that sound makes a little bit of sense to you. What do you think? Uh, if you've heard some great, more modern players, this isn't really a, a you know Charlie Parker thing exactly, but after that, Bill Evans. This is an amazing sound. It does two incredible things for us. First of all, um, it creates some tension, right? And so that's what art is all about. We're always trying to create tension, manage the tension, which is an interesting journey for the listener, for the viewer, and then a resolution typically, but not always, right? Depends on your artistic vision. So in that fourth measure, I am creating all kinds of tension because we agreed those notes are nuts, right? So I've created tension, but guess what? When the chords catch up, you go, oh, I think I see what he was doing. In the moment, you're like, oh, I think he's lost. Oh, okay, got it. Cool, cool. So it, it's another way of creating tension. And over the last 165 videos, we've talked about triad pairs and altered scales and uh, different Brazilian rhythms and a zillion ways to create tension. Here's another one that Joe Lovano and Bill Evans want you to know about. Okay, so a, a way to get cool, tense notes that then make sense after a while. Cool. Here's possibly the bigger thing. Look at the phrasing in example one, and there's a rest in measure four, which there should be if we're playing sensible four measure phrases. Look at, measure, look at example number two, and what do we see? I am playing where I should be resting. So that's like me, you know, I'm probably gonna end this sentence, but then I remember something really cool, right? So that, how energetic it was when someone's, you think they're finishing an idea, but then it picks up and keeps going. Wow, that's an incredible thing, and that's phrasing. So leave the notes aside. I was playing where I should have been resting. So I really did something advanced and aggressive with my phrasing. This is an incredibly hip thing to do. It's simple to understand. So you see that next chord, just play it a little bit early. It is so hard to pull off, or at least for me and for so many uh, you know, students, undergrad, graduate students that I've had, this is a thing that takes a little bit of work. It's just so, we're so used to wanting to nail the chord changes. To be early like this is a big deal. So um, this is gonna take plenty of practice. I think it's easy to understand, harder to put into practice. I'd love for you to give it a try. And the way for us to do this for real, if you wanna get this going in a handful of weeks as opposed to never <laughs> or next year, Jazzwire is the place for us to work together. Sign up for a tour down here and uh, we'd love to get you going. Give this a try and listen to some Bill Evans. I think you're gonna notice this very, very quickly. 
Have fun with it. 